అందరికీ అందరికీ నా హృదయపూర్వక నమస్కారాలు అబ్బా అండ్ పే మై హార్ట్ ఫుల్ రెస్పెక్ట్స్ టు ద డివినిటీ విత్ ఇన్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఐ ఆల్సో పే మై డీప్ రెస్పెక్ట్స్ టు ద ఫౌండింగ్ ఫాదర్స్ ఆఫ్ హార్వర్డ్ అండ్ టు ద కంటిన్యూయింగ్ లెగసీ ఆఫ్ ఎక్సలెన్స్ ఇన్ హ్యూమన్ థాట్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు కన్వే మై హార్ట్ ఫుల్ థ్యాంక్స్ to the student community of Harvard and the committee who hosted all this, to Mehul and his team, thank you a lot for inviting me. It's a privilege to be one of the speakers here, and thank you. So you have to understand my situation. <laughs> the reason is, I started my education at street school, it's quite difficult for me to address a speech in harvard so you have to understand my situation <laughs> my preteens and adolescent years uh, from late 70s to to early 90s was a beginning and end for uh, so many cultural socio socio cultural and political changes happened so for me as a kid i was gr- Uh, coming from a very small lower middle class family my father was started his life as a police constable and my mother being a housewife and we are a family of five so i was a sick child i had a bronchitis problem so i had ample time to contemplate about life's problems whenever i used to fall sick not going to school i used to be at home i used to have all the time to think about what's happening around me so one, one day maybe uh, just finish my street uh, street school which means it's literally on the street uh, in a t- small town called longol my father shifted to been uh, transferred to another small town so they put me to another school which is definitely a better school than what i used to study there where i had studied earlier so in that school one day we had a lesson my teacher was telling about in uh, the class the lesson's name is ma badi it means our school the lesson explains how beautiful our school is and what kind of school it is and we have such beautiful trees we have a huge playground and we have a lot of things to play we have a beautiful library we have this kind of books so it goes on goes on and suddenly my teacher turned because i said something to my friend and everyone were giggling and i said kalyan get up i said what were you saying and i said i had a doubt and i was sharing with this guy i said what is it i said uh, our school doesn't have a playground and we don't have books and uh, we don't have any trees and for me what the teacher did she told me to get up and she gave me the beating of my life till now i could never forget that because for me the first time i realized in my life what had been written in the books what had been said in the uh in spoken word and the reality are two different things so for me that has become a lifetime obsession to see the gap between what has been said and what has been done that has become a lifetime obsession so till now my obsession is even in the political manifesto it still it manifests what they promise and what the, what they deliver are two different things so th- for that reason it has become such an obsession to me i lost my focus in my education constantly i used to see issues everywhere problems everywhere so successfully i failed in my exams <laughs> true <laughs> i successfully failed in my exams so i could not continue my education so i had to stop so one the, the reason was i was so stressed out and everyone now all my friends were going to for in universities in america and they were doing good things and here i've been uh, failing uh, i failed in 10th grade i failed in 11th grade i failed in 12th grade i was continue, consistently was in uh, i was failing i went into some kind of depression and i wanted to commit suicide because for me it was such a painful situation here 
I could see pain and problems everywhere, and my focus is not on the education, on the social ills. So I thought of one day, thought of committing suicide. My brother, I think most of you know that my brother is also an actor. <laughs> and uh, he had a licensed pistol. Yeah. So I thought of uh, taking his pistol, I want to kill myself for the humiliation, for I'm not able to live up what my promise, of what my parents had taught of me to become something. That was a pain I had. So luckily someone, I said to my, one of my family members and they hold me somewhere, they counseled me and they somehow, I could not go ahead with that. So, and later I had given up my education and somehow I started uh, doing whatever I could do. Maybe I was experimenting with my life after that. I went into a different kind of uh, education. I mean, I did my computers and I went into yoga. I did a lot of martial arts and everything. I was continuing like that. For me, as we all know that, every individual is a product of his time and environment. This was my environment I grew up. So finally, what annoyed me or what irritated me was to come into politics after being an actor. For me, to get into acting in the first place, I was not at all interested in acting. I wanted to be a yogi. And because for me, I was I completely be, uh, wanted to be away from this materialistic life. I want to, uh, I was deeply in yoga. I was doing a lot of meditations for a few hours. And I used to give a lot of nice spiritual lectures to everyone in my family. <laughs> yeah. So what my, <laughs> one day my brother was a, quite a hard worker. And he used to work day and night. He used to come home completely tired. Here I said, I used to tell him what life is all about, how we should be detached. <laughs> One day he was so irritated with me, and he said, idiot. Yeah, he called me idiot. <laughs> Whatever you say, I agree with you. Can you be the same guy and same person, even after being something, after making, after creating something, after getting into something, make something concrete, and uh, achieving something. Could you be the same thing Then I listened to you, I said. And that was an awakening to me. So it took me some time. Now I suddenly, life is right in front of me. I don't know this. I missed my education. I missed everything possible. The only opportunity I had was acting. And you have to understand me, I'm, a, I'm quite shy. And even now, if I have to go to shoot, I will never go straight. I always say, go like this, go, go. <laughs> I go from a corner and go, and secretly, like first shot, I always I get into in a discreet manner. Then I feel comfortable. So imagine my plight, few, when, I, when I had started. I was shy, and finally, out of necessity, I had to come out of my own shackles. So what I did, so finally after becoming an actor, so what my old passion was, all through my childhood, I was studying society. I was studying things around me. At one point of time in my childhood, because before uh, I was consistently, what well, the reasons why I was failing was, I could see a lot of issues, a lot of injustice happening around me. I wanted to uh, get into some kind of extremist outfits like uh, Nuxalites and all. My brother was uh, very worried about, about my future. He doesn't know how to control me. He thought if I would buy him a gun, maybe he will uh, confine himself not to go into this kind of extremist outfits, but my problem was not about extremity, not, not about uh, go, getting into Naxalites or radicals. For me, my problem was how to address these issues. Because for me, I had always seen law, Indian law, any, for any situation, gross injustice ha happens, the law is applied weakly to the strong and strongly to the weak. That's the problem of our country. So for me, somehow, I was very upset. 
And all through my life, I struggled because, as I said, especially in uh, late 70s and uh, 90s, it was quite a turbulent time, at least uh, for me. The reason was I wanted to embrace an ideology, and here we had capitalism one side, and still communism is, was quite active then, and Union of Soviet Socialist Republic is still, was still active. And for me, my father comes from a communist family, and he was a hardcore communist. My mother is a deeply religious, and my father, uh, like any other most, like uh, any other Indian communist, I don't know. Definitely, my father, like other communists, I don't know. But, but my father was also a great devotee of uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda and uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. So the contrast of communism and uh, Swami Vivekananda teachings used to be right in, in my home. It used to be quite confusing for me. So I don't know which one to embrace. So I was to wonder what kind of ideology is needed for me to, to go ahead and to, uh, to go ahead. That ha I had these problems. So for me, as I was going ahead, after I had become an actor, and finally I thought I could not do all this, so let me at least in my films, let me project what I have, what I feel about society. So once in a while when I get an opportunity, I used to uh, convey it through my films and songs that, uh, for an extent, but it did not give me enough satisfaction.